All right, so now that you have a good understanding of the different rules for conservation of energy, both total energy and mechanical energy, we're going to focus on mechanical energy the most in problem solving. I'm going to combine a bunch of equations and we're going to derive this new equation that's super awesome. It says here, new, sexy, and ridiculously useful conservation of energy, okay? Conservation of energy equation, which is technically an equation that shows the conservation of mechanical energy, and it's the one that we're going to be using over and over again to solve problems, okay? So I'm going to derive this uh, real quick because there's a lot of components to this that you need to know. I'm going to summarize it at the end. It's a little painful, but just, just work with me here, all right? So remember that the work done by weight, work done by G or MG, uh, both notations is fine, is the negative of the change in potential energy. We talked about this earlier. Um, the work done by a spring um, or by the spring force is the negative of the change in elastic energy. So uh, weight has to do with gravity, so it's the change of gravitational energy, and spring is the change in elastic energy. Makes sense, right? And they're both negative. Now, if I combine these two, I want to remind you that gravity or the, or the weight force and the spring force are the only two types of conservative forces that we discussed. So if we add these two, this is the work done by all conservative forces, right? Those are the only two. The work done by conservative forces is the work of these two combined. These two are the two types of potential energy we have discussed, right? The two types of mechanical potential energies. And so if I add this, I can combine it and say that this is simply the... Um, the change in total potential energy. Because if you write just U, remember it means UG plus UEL, okay? So that's the first equation that we need to know. All right, make this a different color. Cool, so the second one I wanna show you, you already know this one. This is called the work energy theorem. And it says that the network, the work done by all forces, is the change in kinetic energy. Now, what I want to do is I want to change this up a little bit. Well, the network is the work done by all forces, conservative and non-conservative. So the work done by net force, uh, the, the network rather, is the work done by all conservative forces plus the work done by all non-conservative forces. And it just equals the change in kinetic energy. Now, I have this here that I can replace, and look what's going to happen. This is negative delta U plus work non-conservative equals delta K. And if I move the delta U to the other side, I get that the work done by non-conservative forces is delta K plus delta U. I hope you recognize that delta K plus delta U are the two types of mechanical energy the two types of mechanical energy. So this is a change in the total mechanical energy. And that is the second equation you need to know. All right? Actually, that's the third equation you need to know. The second one was over here that you already knew. Um, but it's the, a new equation here that I'm telling you, that I'm giving you, is that the work non-conservative equals the change in mechanical energy. Okay, and the change in mechanical energy, by the way, every time you have the delta, um, it's just mechanical final minus mechanical initial. We're almost done. Um, so there are three equations you need to know. The work, each type of work uh, equals to a change in some type of energy. The work done by conservative forces is the negative of the potential. The work done by non-conservative forces is the total mechanical energy and the work done by kinetic energy. The work done by net um, the, the, the network, the total work rather, is a change in kinetic energy. Okay, so these are the three equations that um, you need to know. But the more important one is what happens when you combine it all. And I'm going to rewrite this here. I'm going to combine this guy with these two guys here. And I'm going to rewrite this equation. I'm going to say that the final mechanical energy equals the, I'm sorry, I'm going to say that the initial mechanical energy I'm going to move this over to the left, it becomes positive, plus the work done by non-conservative forces equals the final mechanical energy. Another way to read this is that the final energy is the initial plus work. Work is an addition of energy. Whatever energy I had plus whatever was added is how much I have now. Okay, so the last thing to do here is I'm going to expand this. Mechanical energy is made up of kinetic and potential 
So kinetic initial, potential initial, plus the work done by non-conservative forces equals, you can expand this as well, kinetic and potential. And this is um, the equation we end up with. This is the conservation of energy equation, okay? Uh, I'm just going to pull an arrow from here since it says conservation of energy. This is the conservation of energy equation. We're going to start most of the problems that we're going to solve, start solving now, are going to be are going to begin with that equation. Okay, so this is massively important. The last thing I want to tell you here is that this guy, work non-conservative, is remember there are two forces that are non-conservative, friction and the force, uh, an applied force by you, so or by some sort of object or animal rather. So the work done by friction plus what I call the work done by you, okay? So I just showed you four equations. This is by far the most important one, and we're going to be using this over and over again to solve problems. Let me do a quick example so we can see how this works, okay? It says here you release a two kilogram object from 100 meters. So two kilogram object, you release it from 100 meters, and I want to find the speed just as it hits the ground. So the speed right here, right before it hits the ground, and it drops a height of 100 meters. The initial velocity is obviously zero because we're releasing, and I want to know what is the final velocity just before it hits the ground. And we're going to use conservation of energy, which means I'm going to write that equation. So we always start here. And now what we're going to do is try to figure out which types of energies exist. Okay, This is a quick preview. Uh, the kinetic energy in the beginning, well, kinetic energy has to do with velocity or speed, right? The object is not moving, so there is no kinetic energy in the beginning. Potential energy has to do with height. The object does have a height, so I do have potential energy. Work non-conservative has to do with the work done by you plus the work done by friction. We're going to ignore air resistance. We always ignore air resistance unless told otherwise. So there is no friction, and you're not doing anything. You just release this thing, and you're just watching. Therefore, there is no work done by conservative forces. Is there a kinetic energy at the end? Well, kinetic energy has to do with speed, and just before I hit the ground, I have some speed. Therefore, there is kinetic energy. Potential energy has to do with height. And just before you hit the ground, your height is 0 .000, whatever. Um, very tiny number, so we're going to say that there's effectively no height. Okay, so height final is zero. Haven't touched the floor yet, but it's basically zero. And then I end up with simply these two terms here. Okay, I end up with this whole thing simplifies into U initial, potential initial, equals kinetic final. Now, you can think of this as an equation, left equals right, but you can also think of this as a transfer of energy, right? My initial potential energy became kinetic energy, all right? The next step, so you write the equation, clear everything out. The next step is, once you have this short form here, you're going to expand this. And what I mean by that is you're going to replace U with what it stands for, MGH. Um, this is the initial height because it's the initial U. And you're going to replace K with what it stands for, half MV squared. And this is final because it's kinetic final. Okay? And now we can go on and try to solve for velocity. All right? You notice in solving for velocity that the masses will cancel. And this is going to happen a lot in motion, um, in, in energy questions. The mass is going to cancel most of the time, actually. So you should be looking out for that. And if I solve for the final speed here, final speed will be, I just have to move the 2 to the other side. So it becomes 2 g h initial. And then I take square root of both sides and I get this. Okay. Now, before I plug in numbers and we'll get the answer, um, I just want to kind of highlight this because you're going to be seeing this answer a lot. Okay. And I want you to become familiar with this so that when you see the square root of 2 g h later on, um, it serves as a sort of a checkpoint, you now know that you're probably right, this looks familiar, right? So I want you to recognize this later because we're going to be seeing this a lot. Now it's just a matter of plugging in the actual numbers. Um, that's the easy part. Two, I'm going to round gravity as simply 10, approximately 10, and then the initial height is 100. And when you do this, you get that the final velocity is, I have it here, um, 
actually don't have it here. I believe this is 45, roughly 45. Cool. And that's it for this one. Um, one of the benefits of using the energy equation, you might have noticed, is that everything is always going to be positive, or at least the majority of the time. You don't have to worry about signs. Uh, gravity just gets plugged in as a positive 9.8, or sometimes we'll round it to 10. Um, and you don't have to worry about the directions of positive and negative and all that stuff, okay? The other benefit is that you don't have to pick any equations. It always starts from here, and then you just cut out wh whatever energies you don't have. Um, until you get to whatever variable you're looking for. All right, that's it for this one.